our strength and, and our, our real focus is a great story. And so it's not, it's not just the story, of course, it's the delivery mechanism for the story and all the technology that allows you to experience it. The interactive conversation system, the biggest thing we were trying to go for in this game was taking away that, that continual pause and we are achieving, basically we do have like a real-time conversation and that's really the key is that it's a real-time conversation that you're inputting into. Telling a good story in a game goes far beyond the writing. Um, it involves all elements of the, of the package working together. You want the gameplay, you want the graphics, you want the writing, it all has to meld together. It's all about creating emotional bonds and ties with, between you as a player and the characters that are in the game. And we've done that through really focusing on every last detail. Like the team has left no stone unturned trying to pursue this, the, the pinnacle of, of characters, of making incredibly realistic characters that allow you to feel immersed in a storyline. The storyline is epic as well. It, it basically, it's a path throughout the whole, it, you get to explore the entire galaxy. So it's a, it's a grand tale. You're the tip of the spear of humanity on the galactic stage. And the characters you're interacting with are just as grand uh, in their own right. Working with uh, Casey and Preston and some of the other leads, we come up with the overall story for Mass Effect. Um, we get an idea of what kind of things we want to focus on, what elements uh, we want in our science fiction IP. And then I would go away and come up with a very broad sort of um, short version of the story and bring it back and then we would sort of iterate on that until we came up with something we're all happy with. Yeah, we can't talk about Mass Effect and not talk about the digital actors and the conversations. I mean, the digital actors are truly incredible, just the most, really the most lifelike characters we've ever had in the game and, you know, almost anyone else in that it's, it's, you know, they really, really seem like they're there and you're watching them and interacting with them and it's real personalities and the way you converse with them, again, we talked about is it's you know different and new. It's a great flowing system where you choose emotions rather than really explicitly saying you know reading lines and re-expressing lines. We want the story and the, the the voice to be as interesting and as interactive as the rest of the game itself. And to do that, we came up with a new interface for you to interact with uh, conversation. In Mass Effect, you actually talk with the characters you meet. Um, to do that, we didn't want you to just be reading an answer, picking it, and then hearing what you had just read in your mind spoken on screen. That kind of breaks up the flow. It doesn't really draw you in. So we've come up with a new dialogue system that allows you to make uh, sort of emotional and instinctive responses, yet still control the conversation. So what I've got open right now is the conversations for one of your characters in the game, uh, for Ashley Williams. She's one of the people who can join up with you throughout the game. Every time she says something, you get a chance to say something back. Depending on your reaction, it branches to a different part of the conversation. So as you can see, we quickly, as we add more and more options, get quite a mess of dialogue here. There's pages and pages and pages of this stuff. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. The other interesting thing about Mass Effect that we've done that has uh, sort of pushed us to a whole level, the entire game is fully voiceover. We've done a lot of voiceover games in the past, but we've never actually had the player speak as well. I won't be moved by sympathy, no matter who you bring into this confrontation. On the one hand, you're watching a science fiction movie, and you can actually, with half of your brain, sit back and, and really enjoy a beautiful looking science fiction movie, but at the same time, you know, in an interactive sense, you realize that you're in control of that character the whole time. Generally, every project tries to push uh, story-based gameplay, which is how do we tell a really good story, you know, in and amongst the, the game plan for Mass Effect, we're really trying to push the cinematic aspect, we're trying to push real-time conversation. Our group is responsible for conversations and cutscenes within the game um, that focus on the story and bringing out the visual context of the story. And what we do with conversations is we begin with an outline of the conversation that has all the dialogue and the VO. And within this dialogue, um, we work with the writers to get across what the objective of the conversation is, what type of motivations the character have, and basically what we want to get across in, in the story. If you go back as far as Baldur's Gate 2, that game had a, a very book book-like narrative to it. However, what we're trying to achieve in Mass Effect is more of a cinematic narrative. Um, so the need for digital acting has sort of increased like exponentially on this project. That's sort of the, the directing style that we go for is, is uh, realism and natural emotion 
and I find that those hooks are just, that's how you, you can really draw the, the audience in. The character creation system that we're making on Mass Effect is pushing the boundaries uh, of, of next generation gaming because we've never had uh, characters this realistic before. Uh, we've never had lip sync and facial animation as sophisticated as what we've got now. And we've never had get, uh, tried to implement a feature of this complexity across an entire universe of characters. We've got uh, literally thousands of characters that have to have a, a performances better than we've ever had before in a game. As generation and generation of games progresses, what we want to do, and as players become more sophisticated, we want them to see the, the characters becoming angry, see them becoming nervous. Um, a lot of our games involve uh, trying to uh, intimidate other characters. They need to detect whether or not an NPC is lying to them or getting nervous, stuff like that. And we don't want to write that, we want to show it. Uh, we've really tried to concentrate on a lot of details that essentially will, will maintain the suspension of disbelief. We always took the attitude that rather than adding stuff to make it more next gen and more cool, we wanted to take, take away from the gaminess of the game, just keep removing things that people expect from a video game. For example, the biggest thing was that, actually the simplest thing, just turning on the eyes, making sure that characters never have dead eyes that wall, wall around when they're you know, moving their head, and always make them focused, and that's a really simple thing. Um, and additionally, having animations blend smoothly into one another, making sure that you don't see this animation, then that animation. And these are the type of things that I think, when games after Mass Effect come out, the, the players will expect that kind of standard as well. I think this game has seen more evolution than the previous games that we've worked on in the sense that, um, you know, we had, we had a good idea of what the end product would look like. But I think this generation in particular um, has changed so much in, in what a video game can look like and the kinds of um, visual fidelity you can pull off, the kinds of acting that we can get out of our characters that uh, one thing we, we weren't able to envision just because the technology didn't exist three years ago is how far we would have to take every aspect of the game and so it's you know if you can create a photorealistic character or a photorealistic environment the animations have to be perfect and if the animations are perfect then the transitions between the animations have to be perfect and the physics and everything has to be all to that same level, otherwise it's very easy to point out the thing that's not working very well. And uh, so we literally have at least an order of magnitude more complexity in every system. And that's something that you just can't visualize from, from three years out. So it's seen a lot of uh, evolution. Overall, I mean, we're trying to make products which have global appeal. So when we make our games, games with great story and character, that's a concept that appeals to almost everybody. If you can convey emotion, if you can make someone believe they're talking to a real person, if you can make them care about the people that are in the game that they're talking to, that's, an, that's a universal concept. And that's one of the things we're really striving for at Bioware.